Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi, Masachet Kitubot, we are up to Perik Yud Gimel Mishnah Vav. Today's Mishnah Yod should be Le'ilu Nishmat Neria Ben Svetlana, Ranbai Veliyahu Ben Burcha Yisrael, Oven Chana Bad Meriam, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen, En Le'avdir Ben Chaim Lechaim, Vada Refua Shelemav, Daniel Shalom Ben Roza, Betor Shah Chole Yisrael. The Mishnah now discusses Admon's fourth ruling, which concerns the following case. Ha'orer An Asadeh, one person challenges the ownership of a field, claiming that the field was originally owned by him and was stolen and sold to the current occupant. But the challenger is signed as a witness on the bill of, this, uh, of sale of this field to the occupant, which shows that the challenger himself recognized that the sale was legal. For example, the Uven challenges Shimon's ownership of a field, claiming that Levi who sold it to Shimon had stolen it from him. However, the bill of sale which records Levi's sale of the field to Shimon names Reuven as one of the witnesses and it has Reuven's signature. Through signing the bill, Reuven has seemingly admitted that the field lawfully belonged to Levi, otherwise he should have challenged Levi's ownership instead of participating in the sale. Admon Omer Admon says, Yecholu Shiyomar, the challenger's signature does not disprove his claim to the field because he can argue as Shini Noachli v'arishun kashe hemenu. I participated in the sale of the field because the second one, meaning the buyer, who is the current occupant, is easy for me to sue, and the first one, the seller, is tougher than him, meaning I signed the bill of sale only to make it easier for me to reclaim the field in court, and I never recognized the validity of the sale. Uven, the challenger, argues as follows. Although Levi, the seller, stole my field and never legally owned it, I did not protest when he sold it to you, Shimon, and I even signed the bill of sale as a witness. My reason for having done so was that Levi is, tough, power, is a tough, powerful man who does not obey court orders and from whom it would have been difficult to recover the property. I therefore wanted the field to be in your possession so that I would be able to retrieve it in court. But the sages say, By signing the deed, he gave up his right to the field since it is as if he admitted that he has no claim to it. The sages argue that if Reuven was telling the truth and he had signed only to make the recovery of his line easier, he would have privately said that to witnesses before signing. In the next case, Admon disagrees, uh, I'm sorry, in the next case, Admon agrees with the sages. As if the occupant sold a neighboring field to someone else, and when identifying its borders in the bill of sale, used this disputed field as a boundary mark for the other field, and the challenger signed as a witness on the bill of sale. So Shimon, who is the occupant of the disputed field, owned a neighboring field, which he sold to someone else. When identifying its four boundaries in the bill of sale, he wrote, the boundary on such and such side is my field, referring to the field whose ownership is now in dispute. It will then sign the, this bill as a witness without protesting the description of the disputed field as belonging to Shimon. Ibed et zichuto, the challenger has given up his right to the disputed feed, field by signing the deed which names the current occupant as the owner of the field. The challenger has admitted that it indeed belongs to the occupant and in this case even Admon agrees that the challenger has lost his claim because the argument that the second one is easier to sue does not apply here. And that is an Abotayv Mishnah Vav. Mishnah Zayin now discusses the fifth of Admon's rulings which concerns a person who owns a field that is surrounded by land that belongs to another person. He also owns a path to his field that runs through the surrounding field. Someone went overseas and when, and when he was away, the path to his field was lost, meaning its location was forgotten. Then when he returned, the owner of the surrounding land refused to let him walk through it to reach his field. Admon Omer Admon says, He may walk to his field by way of the shortest route, since he certainly owns at least that much of the surrounding property, he may take it even against the owner's will. However, he must settle for the shortest route since he has no proof that he ever owned more than that. Admon's ruling applies only if all the neighboring properties are owned by one person. If they belong to different people, he has no right to a path because each one owner can argue that the path ran through his field, but uh, that the path, I'm sorry, ran not through his field, but through another field.
וחכמים אומרים, but the sages say he קנה לו דרך במאה מנה, he cannot seize any path for himself, rather he must buy a path for himself from the owner for as much as 100 מנה, which is 10,000 zoos, an enormous sum of money, if that is what the owner demands, או יפרח באוויר, or else he can fly through there to reach his field, meaning until he comes to some type of agreement with the owner of the surrounding land, he will have no access to his field. The Gemara explains that if all the surrounding properties are owned by one person, the sages agree that he can take the shortest path, even without the owner's permission. And if they are owned by different people, Admon argues that he must pay for a path. The dispute applies only in a case where the surrounding field previously belonged to, a diff to different people and they sold them to one person. Admon holds that since the owner of the field in the middle certainly owns a path somewhere in the neighbor's property, he is entitled to the shortest route. According to the sages though, the neighbor can threaten, if you do not buy a path for whatever I charge, I will return my bills of sale to the original owners and you will not be able to take a path from any of them because each one will push you off to the other. And that is going to tie off today's Mishnah Yomi. And the Rav does tell us before we conclude the Anachah follows the opinion of the Chachamim. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.